Principle number two, be mission focused. Be mission focused. Once you know what God's will is for you because you are in complete submission to it, and this is key, you cannot be mission focused if you're not submitted to something. I know that's a word that's very hard for a lot of us to, to digest. Submission, submission, Elliot, I will submit to nothing and nobody. But when you do not submit to God's will for yourself, you're beating your head against the rock trying to figure out what you're supposed to do and there's no mission for you. You ever hear this saying that, uh, you could, you could climb to the top of the ladder. I climbed to the top of the ladder only to find out that my ladder was against the wrong wall because you didn't obey the very first requirement in being mission focused. So here's how we're going to take a look at what it means to be mission focused and how to be mission focused. We are going to dissect the passion of Christ. So if you're familiar with the story of Christ going to his death, Christ, Christians believe, is the God-man. Essentially, God poured himself out and became the perfect man as an example and savior for humankind. Whether you believe it or not, there's a tremendous amount of value to be understood and gleaned from Christ's life, particularly his passion. Think about uniformity with God's will and being mission-focused and what Christ did when he died on the cross. There are five stages to Christ's passion. The very first is when he is in the Garden of Gethsemane, the night before he goes to his death. And he's kneeling down in the garden and he's praying to God. And his prayer, as perfect as he is, sounds something like this. Oh God, I know what's about to happen. And if it really be of your will, then take it away from me. But if not, let thy will be done. That is a tremendous submission to that which ultimately saves mankind from its damnation in the example of Christ. He knows he's about to be whooped up and nailed to a cross because God knows everything. But even still, that human part of him resists just slightly, but ultimately what? Submits. The second stage in Christ's passion is his scourging at the pillar. And if you ever get to watch the movie, Passion of Christ, you know how, how brutal that was with the, the, the Roman guards are just whooping on his back with these, uh, they call them scourges, right? They would, they, they would have like whips and they would put like rocks and shells on the end of it so it would tear your skin up. Well, each one of these stages of the passion have a, have a virtue associated with it. The very first is submission. But when Christ is at the pillar being scourged, he's demonstrating and he is bringing forth the virtue of purity. Purity. To be, motion, to be mission focused is to be submitted, but also to be purged of all impurities. Because how many times do you have a mission in your life? I, you know, I say you guys, but I even talk about myself and all of this. The only reason why I know any of this stuff is because I'm a screwed up dude too. So I've had to go through all this stuff. How many times have you gone about a mission or, or you had a vision or you had something that you want to go about, but that weakness within you holds you back? I have so many little weaknesses that hold me back. For example, there's new projects that I want to unfold, but as I'm getting older, I'm not as courageous as I used to be, right? Not to say that I can't practice it, but I haven't had to. And so I get stuck in this paralysis of analysis that is a byproduct of fear. If you're gonna be mission focused and you submit to the mission that's unfolded for you, you gotta let go of all unresourceful fears and, and hangups, purity. That's what is represented by Christ being whooped, scourged on the pillar, being purified. I mean, I could only imagine to be in that instant to be purely submitted and purified physically. What a challenge. We're not asked. We're not asked to be purified that way. Christ did that for us. We're simply asked to experience the pain of purifying our 
inner beta, our weaknesses, right? Our, our hangups, our fears. Step number three is when they put the crown of thorns on Christ's head and they say that that represents moral courage. Moral courage. Think about all of the virtue and your values that are, that are moral. Moral virtues and values. If you're gonna be mission focused, there are certain things that you're going to do and you're not going to do. There are certain things you're willing to do and you're not willing to do, right? Say you're mission focused to make a million dollars. Well, I'm not gonna do it by robbing people. Let's say you're mission focused to, uh, to, to sell a particular product, but you know that you'll be going against your values if you do, right? Oh man, I could make a million dollars uh, on um, OnlyFans, <laughs> right? For example, there's no moral courage for someone who sells their body on OnlyFans, right? There's pure desperation and, uh, and, and, and narcissism, right? There's no moral courage to say, I'm gonna take my clothes off and that's how I'm gonna make money, right? So the whole thing with regards to moral courage is your willingness to do the right thing when you're on your mission. That's being mission focused. That's being clear on your mission and being focused. Number, number uh, four, is when Christ carries his cross. He even says, if you can't, if you don't pick up your cross and follow me, you're not worthy of me. What is Christ saying? He's saying, be patient in your pain. Being mission focused means, damn, this is a heavy thing to carry. This is a heavy cross to carry. This is, this is painful at times. I don't want to do this. I'm falling down. If you watch the movie, Passion of Christ, you watch how many times he fell down. He not only fell down, and, and was crushed beneath the weight of that cross. But in his patience, he also, and in his submission and purity and courage, he accepts help. I think the guy's name was Simon that comes and helps him. He accepts help. Sometimes your patience means that I need to, I need to be patient with other people so that they can help me bear this cross. And then finally, the last of the aspects of being a mission focused man based on biblical masculinity is final perseverance christ dies for his mission on the cross that is essentially dying to your ego or dying to your hang-ups dying to your weaknesses dying to a version of yourself that's no longer resourceful for that which you're becoming in life you gotta die that's what christ means when he says you got to be born again, if you're going to be born again, what does that mean? To be born again means you got to die. The old man has to die and the new man has to rise. You got to die. So you got to be willing to die on it. You ever hear somebody say this? I'm going to die on this hill. I die on this hill. That's what it means to die on that hill. That means till, till, till the cows come home, I'm on this mission. It doesn't matter. And think about how rare that is today. You know, one of the things I'd like to talk about here in a moment, actually, the next one is going to be talking about women, women in marriage. Part of the reason, there's a lot of reasons why marriage doesn't work today, but a big part of it is a lack of virtue. And that means a, a lack of a willingness to, to sacrifice oneself for the greater good. Marriage and family is not a, it, it, because we're so narcissistic in our day and age, it's like, oh, what's in it for me? There's nothing in it for me. Not realizing that there's a bigger picture. Christ recognized the bigger picture of his sacrifice on that cross. What's the bigger picture of the sacrifice for your mission that you know you're on because you're in your uniformity with God's will? Moving on. 